Collier, along with the World Boxing Association. President, Gilberto Mendoza. Supervisor, Jesper Jensen. Our timekeeper is Stephen Pucci. Our three judges assigned, all from England, will be Howard Foster, Steve Gray, and Bob Williams. Our referee in charge will be Michael Alexander of England. Introducing to you first the challenger fighting tonight out of the red corner. He comes to the ring wearing pink with white and weighed in at seven stone, 13 pounds. Coming to us from Cartago, Costa Rica, Pura Vida. He brings an undefeated record with 12 wins. Nine of his 12 wins come by way of knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the WBA mandatory challenger, David Medajita Jimenez. And his opponent across the ring, he is the defending world champion, fighting tonight out of the blue corner. He comes to the ring wearing red with gold and black and weighed in the same as his opponent, seven stone, 13 pounds. Hailing from Kiev, Ukraine, he is undefeated with 21 wins. 15 of his 21 wins come by way of knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, here is the reigning and defending WBA flyweight champion of the world, Artem De La Well, as you both know the rules, so let's just have a good, clean fight, okay? Most of all, room to defend yourselves at all times, all right? Just close. Keep it clean. Of his 112 pound title he won against Brian Valoria at the forum in February of 2018. Four of those have been knockout victories. This is the first time that he defends his belt outside of his native Ukraine. Bernardo soon alongside former world champions and Hall of Famers Andre Ward and Timothy Bradley. This fight emanates from the Oval Arena in London. Right away you see Jimenez Plan defense. Just want to take a look at the Lockian. The Lockian's been out of the ring for over a year, Bernardo. Months. Yeah, 14 months. If I'm Jimenez and his team, I'm coming out to test that chin right away. It's going to take him about four rounds to get acclimated and get his timing down because he's been out of the ring so long. Yes, he's been out of the ring for the same reason a lot of the Ukrainian fighters have been out of the ring, the Russian invasion. He did not participate in military works. Instead, he did volunteer work raising funds to help the military. See the first shot that was landed, a looping left hook there from Delakian. That's typically how Delakian likes to fight in small explosive bursts. So that's what Jimenez is looking out for, even though he's starting to press uh, little by little right now in this first run. It might have took that left hook to wake him up a bit. The Lockin uses his legs in awkward style. Some Nazim Hamed and Big Darchinian in there. You see how Jimenez using that pawing jab with the inside of the glove to keep him away. It's interesting that both guys, they, they love to change their rhythm. You see Delakian right there, he throws a feint. He has that loose guard style where he depends on his reflexes then keeping his hands up and, and blocking shots or deflecting shots with his guard. So we saw how that worked or didn't work for Chris Eubank Jr. Yeah. last week against <laughs> Liam Smith. Yep. So 
Good eyes right there by Jimenez, ducking underneath that left hook. Yeah, with Go ahead. Laura film study, I mean, both these guys, they get hit with right hands. That's the punch of choice, I, was, I would say, for both fighters. Right hands. See the lead hand of Delakian down, and Jimenez carrying his lead hand down as well, which creates an opening for the right hand. The corner of Jimenez telling him, don't just chase. Don't go after him. I want him to be more patient. Round one comes to an end inside the Ovo Arena, set up for 12,000. Ukraine for the first time, and when he returned, he came back a champion. Yeah, I think that was his age, honestly. Valoria, Brian Valoria, I know him very well. Uh, the this fighter, champion. Um, I think just the age caught up with him, and the locked in, you know, he did what he had to do. Round two of a scheduled 12 round fight for the WBA Flightweight Championship of the World. And there's history on the line for David Jimenez as he wants to become the first male born in Costa Rica to win a world title. And Dre, history is always of importance when you leave your country to represent them on the world stage. It's a great added motivation to what is already uh, a fight that should give Jimenez a lot of motivation. The money, uh, just winning a title outright, but the historical aspect of it definitely adds to what he's bringing into the ring. Nice right towards the body of the lock-in, who does well to move out of the way. Yeah, many Jimenez is doing exactly what he should do. Press the issue. Push back the lock-in. The lock-in likes to take his time. He likes to shoot precise punches. You know, he's pretty accurate with his shots. Changes angles and levels. Nice left hook and right hook. There from Jimenez, both still trying to get comfortable. And we expected this from Delakian, uh, as you mentioned, Tim, just the fact that he's been away from the ring for 14 months. Yeah, he got to get his timing down. He's not acclimated just yet. You know, when he starts landing, then you'll know he got his rhythm. But right now, Jimenez is taking it to him. That's the right game plan for Jimenez, being the guy who has less experience than Delakian. He's not waiting around for Delakian to get warmed up. He's trying to pile up points, get his own rhythm, and set the tone for this fight. Jimenez wasn't even supposed to be here. It was a title eliminator against Ricardo Sandoval in Los Angeles in July of 2022 that he was able to win um, by a decision, majority decision, and he knocked down his opponent in round 11. That proved to be the margin of victory, and so he's looking to pull off back-to-back -back upsets as he gets caught coming in by a nice left hook from Artem Delakian. I think Delakian touched him in his probably about 30 seconds ago with the punch that got his attention. And you see Jimenez now backing up and looking for another way in to the house. And Delakian recognizes that and you see him pressing forward. And you alluded to that left hand that hangs low from the lock in. It, it's like I saw a, a video where it was a bird who threw out a little bit of a breadcrumb trying to get the fish to come and bite until <laughs> it finally came. And then, boom, he snatched it out of the water. And that's what he's trying to do here at the end of round two. And to believe that he belongs there and that he can take this belt from you. So I think the burden is on Delakian to set the tone in this fight, especially early. Ooh, ooh. nice right hand there from Delakian. Shakes, he managed once again. I told you guys about a round ago, that's the points of choice of both men. The right hand. A lot of exposure on the left side of each man.
you can see the power in Delakian's hands. 15 knockouts and 21 victories compared to 9 knockouts and 12 wins for Jimenez. But the level of opposition has been a lot better for Delakian. Did you see his shoulders when they were when they went face to face? Did you see Delakian's shoulders? My goodness. His shoulders are massive. <laughs> what a small guy. You see the quick southpaw turn from Delakian. It looks like he's starting to get those legs going, the, the blood starting to pump inside and, you know, getting that rust off. Yeah, Delakian likes to walk guys into shots. That's what he likes to do. He likes to use timing, use his feet, distance. You create distance between you and your opponent, and he shoots a shot, you're able to see it a lot more clear, clearly. And then you're able to re react to it. I think, him up for I think Delakian needs to start to pick up the pace. Jimenez is consistent and steady, not landing a lot, but the body language suggests that Jimenez is in control of some of these rounds, and maybe he, in reality, he's not. Delakian has to start attacking Jimenez. He can go back to boxing after that, but he's got to have three, four, five moments around where he's letting the judges know that I'm in control. Yeah, speaking of the judges, Bob Williams has 230 career fights, Steve Gray over 1,200, and Howard Foster over 1,400 fights all out of England and later on today felt title defense against Anthony Yard. Delakian trying to establish the jab here in round number four. Starting a little bit more active. That's what you were asking for. That Greg. would help. That would help. When, when you have the belt, you want your body language, your fighting style to suggest that you're the champion. You want to you you carry that. That's a good pressure to have. If I didn't know who was the champion coming into this fight with these first three, now fourth round, I wouldn't know who the champion is. They're, they're too similar. And I think Delakian can start to pick up the pace and see if Jimenez can keep up. That burden is on Delakian as the champion. Delakian's first 12 round fight was in his seventh fight and in his ninth fight was the first time that Jimenez went the distance in his upset win over Ricardo Sandoval in the, the last month of July. Because by not doing that you see Jimenez gaining confidence little by little by little. He's not only throwing more he's starting to land more. Uh, he's here to win. He's here to win this championship. No doubt about it. You can tell in his body language. Jimenez is definitely here to win. Lockheed is just a little too calm for me. Oh, he's looking for and, one shot. And, and a little too casual at this point. He's looking for one shot. That's all. The Lockheed is looking for one shot. He's looking to time him on the way in with one shot. He's coming off of a win, his fifth title defense against Luis Niga Concepcion in Ukraine. The corner threw in the towel after he dropped him in round six and seven. So he likes to settle in, much like we expect Archer Better BF to do in our main event. But these are rounds that he's allowing W. Jimenez to control or seemingly control. I'm going to tell you this. Jimenez is not going to slow down. Mm -hmm. I remember his fight. I believe it was with uh, Sandoval. Correct. Oh, good. Fantastic fight. Anyway, could have went either way. He got the knockdown later in the fight. Round 11. Poured it on, you know, towards the back end. He's going to stay on the gas. If you show weakness, he's definitely going to keep him exploiting. Oh, you see that little body language right there from Jimenez. You see he's fully confident now. Whatever doubt he may have had lingering in his mind, do I belong at this level? Can I fight with this guy? That's out the window. He fully believes he can win. To Tim's point, the right hand is available, and he's landing it more and more, and that may be the shot to get Delakian. Well, Delakian just landed left hook, and you saw the legs of Jimenez kind of buckle a bit. I'm not sure if he was off balance, or maybe he was buzzed with the shot. And now the question is, does he try to come back and get it too soon? Or does he work his way back intelligently as round number four comes to an end? And we invite you to join us next Friday from Glendale, Arizona, as Bob Aram, along with Mr. Warren and Emmanuel Navarrete, look to put his name alongside Eric Morales, Marco Antonio Barrera, and Leo Santa Cruz, amongst those three division champions out of Mexico from 122 to 130 pounds. All right, round five of a scheduled 12-round world title fight. WBA 
112 pound title on the line. Artem Delakian making the sixth defense of his belts. And he had some success against David Jimenez there in round four. He had a little success, but it wasn't anything sustained. If a judge is looking at that round, they're not going to give Delakian that round off of a, a split second moment where he landed a good shot, even though he got a slight reaction from Jimenez. I'm looking at who's pressing forward and is it effective? And Jimenez is becoming more and more effective with each passing round. He's landing more and more shots, and he looks like the fighter who's hungrier at this point. The crazy part is judging is sub sub subjective, and uh, what I'm saying is, is that, yes, Jimenez landed probably more shots, but who landed the harder blow during the course of that round? A lot of people will say Delakian. So you have judges that will favor Jimenez, and then you have judges that also would say, well, Delakian buzzed him with that left hook. So he wins the round. And we're going to see how Jimenez reacts to the cut now over his right Ooh. eye. This is the second time he's been cut. He was cut against Edwin Cano in June of 2021. And, you know, sometimes that changes the perspective of the judges as well, especially in a close fight. You're right about that. Remember Manny Pacquiao mm. in Australia, Jeff Horn. Absolutely. <laughs> And his first fight against Eric Morales, the first time he'd been yeah. cut in a major fight. And, you know, he didn't know how to react. So we'll see how David Jimenez does. For a non-fighter, that cut looks terrible. And it's like, oh, my God. For a fighter, that's a good place to have a cut. <laughs> exactly, on the outside right? of the eye, right? <laughs> it, it doesn't obstruct your, your vision. Uh, it's not stopping Jimenez at all. Um, he's still pressing forward. Yeah, but I wonder if, it, if that was, that's, was caused by punch or a butt i mean it's high on the, it looks like it's on the head yeah i think it's a headbutt we'll get a look at it in the replays in between rounds but you see how jimenez is becoming more aggressive but then it's also brought out some aggression from artem delakian because sometimes you say all right let's take advantage i see an opportunity i see a weakness let's go after it i don't see it though bernard i see a lot of passivity from delakian i don't see a guy who is trying to hold on to a championship belt i see a guy who is not in a good rhythm right now he's searching for answers in real time he'll land the occasional shot but jimenez is in control of this fight at the moment and that's a push down from delakian it's the inactivity that's exactly what it is. Inactivity, being off a year. Head clash right there. You caught immediately. It's in a wonderful place if you're going to be cut. It's not the better BS cut right between the eyes or over the eyelids. Shouldn't be an issue. Yeah, they should be able, they should be able to close that cut. I wonder if the referee caught it and, and, and you know, called. we rarely see a, a cut that's caused by a punch on the side of the head, so it shouldn't be too hard of a call. But that, that is a good place if you're going to get cut in a boxing match. Yeah, but the only part is, is that it's hard to stop the bleeding. Anything near the skull is difficult to stop bleeding. In Tim's case, the big skull. <laughs> 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 All right, we're here in round number six of a scheduled 12 round championship fight and the locking continues to be on the back foot Ooh, and there's gosh, nothing man. wrong if you're effective, Gray, but you're not a big fan of his style as we see a warning for a forearm there from referee Michael Alexander to David Jimenez. You can box how you want to box if you're effective. That's the operative word. There's, there's no effectiveness from Delakian. He's boxed long enough where he can close his eyes and he's going to land a shot every now and again. But I don't see him setting anything up. I don't see him trying to draw Jimenez in and I don't see him. Uh, he's not effective right now. Well, the, Jimenez, give him credit. I mean, he's changing his rhythm up. He'll attack in spots and then he'll he'll lay back and he'll let Delakian come in and then he'll attack him again. I mean, it's just he's changing his rhythm up. He's fighting at a furious pace and Delakian is having a hard time dealing with it. If anything, the blood only worked Jimenez up and, and made him more aggressive. Well, he found the key. As long as he don't get hit with the big shot on the way in, which he knows he's able to land. Yeah. yeah. Now you see Delakian settling down, yep. settling his feet, and trying to catch Jimenez walking in, as you were mentioning. There goes loose hands right there. Depending on reflexes and timing, dropping that guard like that. 
And you see, he landed those few punches, right? And you see what Jimenez did, he stepped back. He didn't want to, he didn't want to engage anymore. And that's to Dre's point. Expected a lot more action from these flyweights. You know, 112, these guys are usually throwing a ton of shots, but there's a lot of respect for the respective power of one another. Ooh, nice right uppercut from Delakian. See, that was a changeup punch right there. I mean, he was throwing a fastball, throwing a fastball, then he finally threw the curveball and caught him with it. Beautiful shot right there from Delakian. Ooh, all right, nice left hook there from Jimenez. The lock in gets tangled up a little bit, and we are now halfway through this fight as we lead up to our main event. Better be of y'all. Definitely have to agree with you. I could see maybe the, the amount of punches landed, but not, not even the landed fact that, that Jimenez is throwing 100 less. He's, he's landed. I can count on one hand how many shots <laughs> the lock in has landed. And he's certainly not thrown as much as Jimenez, so I, I, I can't agree with that. But you gotta watch the fight, you know. The other information is, is there to try to help, try to help support what you're watching, but nothing can beat what you see in real time. Numbers complement about how you watch a boxing match, but they really don't tell the story. You see a nice short left hook from Delakian, and this is where Jimenez has to be careful, Tim, you mentioned, not getting caught coming in. Can't get overly aggressive. You know, I understand the game plan is this, to apply the pressure, but he still has to be calculated and avoid getting hit with those big shots on the way in. Keep in mind, this is Delakian's first title defense outside of Ukraine. So he may be used to getting some home cooking, although he's finished four of those by knockout. So he only had one decision uh, against Joseph Perez, and that was in February of 2020. But He's just very comfortable fighting this way. He's starting to get his rhythm now. I'm starting to see him land a little bit more on Jimenez. Even though Jimenez is not easily deterred at the moment, he, he's getting hit on the way in. A little blow there from Jimenez with the left. See his daughter's name on the back of his trunks as he tattoos the lock-in with an overhand right. You have the actual fight, punch for punch, what you're seeing and what you're watching, and then you have the story of the fight. And as a fighter, you have to sell a story to the judges. Mm. If I'm looking at this fight, the story that I see Jimenez selling to the judges is that I'm the hungrier fighter, I'm the aggressor, and if we both landed five punches in that round, I'm probably gonna lean toward Jimenez because he looks like he wants to win more than Delaki. Nice left hook there from Jimenez. And there's a ton of mental pressure on the champion too when he's getting pressed back like that. You know, that mental pressure causes fatigue. And physical, it, yeah. it, it's, he feels it. So Jimenez is doing to Delakian what I expected Delakian to do to Jimenez, which is I'm the more experienced guy. I'm the champion. Let me take advantage of your inexperience at this level. Ooh, nice. Jimenez has flipped the script. Yeah, he didn't take his opportunity to show Jimenez he didn't belong. This is, he's got an excellent jab and a punishing right hand. So I can't wait to see what he does as we get our first look at that young man against Ezequiel Maderna, a man we saw uh, who actually fought Archer Better Diaz in Archer Better Diaz 10th professional. He got stopped. <laughs> on, I was like, he got stopped. <laughs> who has it? Right, 18 by 18. Can he make it 19 tonight? We gonna see. 
round eight. Bernardo Suna alongside Hall of Famers Timothy Bradley and Andre Ward. And the pressure continues to be put on by David Jimenez and Tico from Costa Rica. Extensive amateur career for the fighter out of Costa Rica. Had 357 amateur fights, won 319 of them. And it's crazy because Delakian is used to, to dominating guys and pushing them back. But he's getting pushed back. He doesn't like to be bullied. It's usually how it goes. Guys that tend to come forward don't like to get pushed back. Jimenez is doing slightly better than Delakian, but he looks like he's doing a lot better than Delakian based on the body language. No fear in his eyes. He knows what he wants, and he's going after it. Inside, Delakian is grabbing and holding and looking for the ref, and Jimenez is trying to break free, pushing Delakian back, roughing him up, trying to free his hands. And obviously, he felt the power, so he's not... He's not bagging off because he's not affected by any of the punches. And the later the fight goes, the power starts to weaken a bit. The lock in with a stiff jab, but Jimenez just keeps walking right through it. I mean, Jimenez is fighting for history. There's something to be said about what Jimenez is after in this particular fight, and that is glory. It's something that means so much to him right now because he has a chance to do something that no man has ever done for Costa Rica. Another thing that I like from Jimenez is, is that he's Ooh, nice left. He's showing no respect to the champion. Threw him on the floor like that. And the guy he just went over him and, and See, he's, even that Jimenez oh, he's is selling mind, a story to the judges. He's selling a story him. that he doesn't want to be here. He, he's afraid. And he and that was a trip. Mm -hmm. But that trip and the way his body lay out the way he uh, hovered over uh, Delakian, that's just a small little thing that adds to the story of the fight in the judges' mind. That he's in control. Well, I hope, I hope they're seeing what you're seeing because you never know what the judges. All three are Brits, so there's no inclination either way. But they've got to respect Jimenez's aggressiveness. There's a jab from Jimenez. And there's one thing to walk back, and there's another thing to be sent back, which is what Jimenez just did to Delakia. And the fighter starts smiling like that, coming forward. Feeling comfortable, look at me dancing, he's having a good time. He's saying, you have nothing for me. That's what he's saying. You have nothing for me, the lock-in. Round eight is come to an end, and it all leads us to the victory this would be if Anthony Yard is able to pull off the upset. He can. He can. If, if, if you combine both fighters' records, 43, 40 by way of knockout. Understand that he has the power to hurt better be it and only one decision victory for Anthony Yard. He was stopped by Kovalev, and he lost to Lyndon Arthur Ooh. by majority decision. And you see Jimenez just sharpshooting Artem Delacqua. That's the right hand you were talking about. And the uppercut, oh. That's the right hand you were talking about, Tim. Mm. Round nine, and Jimenez showing no signs of slowing down, and Delacqua, no signs of having figured out how to stop Jimenez from coming forward. Although that jab works pretty well. The jab, he, he, you know, he hasn't established, he hasn't established anything in his jab. That's the problem with Delakian. He's moving around too long and not countering enough. So Jimenez is not respecting anything coming from him. Jimenez though is leaning in and Delakian just landed a nice uppercut moments ago. So if he can set up that uppercut counter and go with that overhand right, he could have a chance to turn things around. Oh yeah, he sure can. You see the rhythm change right there from Jimenez. See how he was rushing in with combinations and then he, he set right at the threshold of, of mid-range to outside. And he's baiting, he's baiting, and he's waiting, he's waiting. He might shoot a punch, then he'll, he'll move out. Then he'll attack. He just keeps constantly changing his rhythm up, not allowing Delakian to catch on. Just moments ago, we heard 
the chance of oe 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 tico tico for the costa rican fighter who's looking to make history for his country and become the first ever male world champion and i mean he's got the lockian questioning himself so far although i don't know maybe the lockian is comfortable in this way and, and believes this is enough to win the fight because there's no urgency there's no change not many adjustments from the ukrainian See that right there, that left hand. Subtle movement left and right and use your jab. One way to deal with the pressure fighter. Anybody that's coming in and want to get in your grill. I'm impressed by the defense of Jimenez because I expected him to just be more of a come forward fighter and, and search for the world title. And he's he's got some head movement, moves his waist pretty good. Getting out of the way. All the extra pressure, and it is extra pressure because everyone expects you to win. And of course, you got some haters in the house, even the ones that are local. That comes with the territory. But you see, you have your desire and the desire of everyone else going into that ring. And that's what you have to shoulder when you're facing uh, uh, an opponent like Better Be If at this magnitude at home. A fight that could be dangerous from the moment the bell rings until the final bell in the 12th round because Better BF has shown to carry his power late. Something that, as of now, Anthony Yard has un been unable to do. Inside the ring, we have Artem Delakian, the WBA flyweight champion, making the sixth defense of his belt against a very determined David Jimenez from Costa Rica, who's looking to make history for his country and become the first male to become a world champion. Jimenez overextended there, and the locking caught him coming in. Yeah, I love the body work from Jimenez. You know, investing in that body. You know, I talk about this every time I'm on air. I love it. You know, and every time he goes down to the body, you see what the locking does. He, he tends to tie up. He wants to hold. No one likes it downstairs. Nice gap from Jimenez, switching it up on the boxer. The mouthpiece came out from Delakian, it seems, or they're tying his shoe. Ah, it's the shoe. There should be tape on that shoe. That shouldn't, that shouldn't happen. There should be tape over those lassos. There should be tape on them. On those shoelaces. Or it's a way to give your fighter a little extra. No, no, no. I mean, that, that, that's, that's literally protocol here in America. You gotta, ha you have to taper. Good body shots. Good combination from Delaki. That's what he's capable of if he lets his hands go. We talked about the fact maybe he needed a breather. He got a breather. He came out firing. That's what he's capable of. That's what won him the title and allowed, it, allowed him to defend it up until this point. And now he's coming forward and he's changing the narrative in his favor. But can it be sustained? Can he keep this up? And will Jimenez allow it? You see the physical strength of Jimenez, Dre. He's done it before where he throws uh, the lock-in down. What does that do to the judges? What does it show them? Well, it depends on who the judge is. Some judges will look at that as incidental contact and no harm, no foul. And, and some judges may look at it the way that you just defined it. Is that Ooh. this fighter, good shot right there from Jimenez, that made Delakian hold on. It may tell a judge that this fighter's stronger and is pressing forward. It shouldn't have an impact, but these are humans that are judging these fights. What did have an impact was that left hook to the chin of Delakian. Let's see his answer, if any, to Jimenez. See that body work that Tim likes so much from Jimenez. And as, as the fighter that gets pushed to the canvas, you don't want to be down there for any reason. It takes a lot of energy yep. in a tough fight to roll over, pull yourself up. It doesn't seem like much, but it, it, it's a lot. Stay off the canvas at all costs. Good body shots from Jimenez. Nah. Oh. nah, that was that was Crawford, Ricky Burns. Oh, okay. Whitaker. I was doing a Whitaker. Yes, that's right. Yeah. Whitaker the hitter. 
until you got to him. <laughs> All right, championship rounds here between David Jimenez, who's challenging Artem Delakian for his WBA flyweight title. And you see Jimenez coming out strong here in round 11, where he had success pulling off the upset and dropping Ricardo Sandoval in L.A. Why wouldn't he come out like this? This is, this is exactly what he's supposed to do. Delakian had some success last round. If I'm in the corner of Jimenez, I tell him, go back to work. Do what you've been doing to get us to this point. We don't know what the judges are seeing. We don't know what the scorecards are, but leave no doubt. Now things have also turned on the CompuBox numbers. 101 total punches landed so far for Jimenez compared to 80 for Delakian. So <laughs> no, I think they started to count the punches right. No, Dre. they heard They heard us. Yeah. They, heard, they, <laughs> they heard Dre. <laughs> they said, man, if the Hall of Famer is saying this, what, uh, I, better look, I better look closer. There you see Jimenez making the lock in miss and coming yeah, right after him. Shot a right shot there. to the chest. Doesn't I, matter where you hit him, yes, just hit him. That uh, is, yes, that body shot hurt, especially late in this fight. Oh my God, I just love it. I love the tactical work by Jimenez. I, I just love, he does the right things at the right, be beautiful body shot right there as well. And the lock turn for the lock in, but you know, when you have Jimenez, he gets hurt with a shot. He'll bag out, he'll play defense. You know, he'll change his rhythm, he'll change positions. And then, as soon as he sees the low in his opponent, then he attacks right away. He gets inside, he goes down to the body, and then when his opponent looks to tie him up, he roughs him up. You know, he's physical on the inside. With his head, pushing his head up, or pushing it down, doing whatever he's needed, not showing any respect to the champion. You see the champion now backing up as Jimenez keeps coming at him, and He's got that grin, that grit inside of him. That's that championship grin. What you see in Delakian is a fighter who does well when things are going his way. He never learned how to deal with uh, dealing with a pressure fighter or inside. You don't see him inside thinking and trying to maneuver. And even if he needs to rest, you can tell a guy who's experienced on the inside and a guy who's a novice on the outside. Um, Delakian is good if you allow him to be good. But on the inside, he's a complete novice. See, counterpunchers, to your point, counterpunchers, they like distance. So that way they can see the shots coming and then they can make, make them counter. You know, but when you take the distance away from them and you pressure them and you make them have to have to use defense, that's how you stop. All right, but you have to know that you're not going to always be able to have a, uh, an opponent at the perfect range. So you have to work on mid-range and in close. You have to. Mm. He has it. <laughs> Obviously not. Opportunities that come are different. So both fighters have a lot on the line. Neither fighter has an excuse to not put out tonight in this fight. And let's hope round 12 finishes as we've seen so many other great flyweights do their thing historically. And David Jimenez and Artem Delakian trying to put it all on the line here because I don't think either guy could be comfortable with feeling they've won the fight. It would have to favor Jimenez, but you never know. Both are on the road, both are in England. And I don't know what these judges are saying. That's not in Jimenez's favor at all. It's not in his bag. He's going he's gonna to give you everything he has. And he's been doing that from the first round. I just don't see the inspiration from Delaki, and I don't see fire. I don't see a man that's trying to defend something. I see a man who's willing to give something up. I see Jimenez fighting to get something that he's never had, his country has never had, and 
Delakian has a round and a half to try to turn it around. Well, uh, Dre hooked right from Jimenez. Go ahead. Six. Well, only six men have survived with him. I mean, 15 knockouts. He's used to hitting guys and they just fall. Now he got a guy he hit. He hit as hard as he can and he's in his face. The other thing, Dre, not only no sense of urgency, I don't think he got out of third gear the entire fight. I believe that. I, I haven't seen that. We've seen spurts, which makes this performance even more frustrating when you see him let his hands go, when you see the type of punches that land and how crisp they are and how he puts his combinations together. You know he has more than what he's showing. He just hasn't been able to do it in a sustained way. One minute away, or maybe a historic performance in favor of David Jimenez. Will he be able to say, pura vida, and take a title back home to Costa Rica as the first male to ever win a belt? He's doing his part, but the judges have to do theirs. Look, when you're, when you're off for that long, your timing gets off, you, you get uncomfortable with the bright lights, you know, you got to come back. You, don't know if you can take it on the chin. That was a beautiful uppercut right there from the Lincoln. And your conditioning, it goes by the wayside. You got to understand when you're fighting, you're staying active, you're staying sharp. You're sharpening your tools. Tonight, you see a dull, dull champion. 14 months away, the Ukrainian conflict back home, part of the reasoning. And you see how David Jimenez wants to put a stamp, an exclamation point on his performance tonight here in the closing seconds of round number 12. The first time he fights for a world title, will he leave he England as a world champion? He won that. That is a man that doesn't know if he's going back just uh, 102 power punches, so only 20 jabs for Jimenez compared to a total of 37 jabs for Delakian. So the numbers favor Jimenez. And, and Dre, you see the fans uh, celebrating for him, and we're waiting for the official decision inside the ring as Thomas Triber is now stepped up and ready to announce the winner. We go to the judges' scorecards. Both judges, Bob Williams and Howard Foster, are in agreement. They score at the same 115 to 113. And Judge Steve Gray scores it 116 to 112. All in favor of your winner by unanimous decision. And still, Whoa. WBA flyweight champion of the world, Artem. Yeah. Unbelievable. <laughs> or not so unbelievable. Oh my gosh. Are you kidding? They just robbed him, man. They robbed him of an opportunity. They robbed him in their history. He earned all. One fighter had desire and brought the fight the whole time. And another fighter didn't. And they rewarded the guy who didn't show. Holy in boxing, man. Oh my goodness. Holy in boxing.